Welcome to Truth Be Told. I'm your host, Tony Sweet. Joining me, your other host, Captain Ron, is here. We have another great show for you guys. We have another best-selling author, Jeremy Bates, with more than a dozen novels, which has been translated into several different languages. His debut novel reached number one on Amazon Kindle Store, while the novels in the World's Scariest Places series are set in real locations, and that's some of the stuff we're going to be talking about with him today. We're going to talk about one of his books, Suicide Forest, where it talks about a bone-chilling journey into the Japanese forest where generations have chosen to commit suicide. But one of his tags, it says, it's easy to enter, but will you ever get out alive? And then we're going to talk, some of my favorite subjects is world's scariest places. And these are real places, and we're going to find out exactly where they're at. And we hope maybe one day we could travel there and see if these are for real. Let's get this show started, so please welcome to Truth Be Told, best-selling author, Jeremy Bates. Well, we have Mr. Bates here, and we are excited to have him on our show. We want to welcome you guys to Truth Be Told. And uh, Captain Ron, are you excited about this show? I, I was muted there. Did you mute me? Well, of course. I have <laughs> there to, it is. Remember, I'm, I'm very I excited. Remember, I'm this the diva. Right up our alley. This guy's right up our alley. I'm yeah. really excited. Well, uh, Jeremy, thank you so much for being on Truth Be Told. I know our audience uh, is going to love it. And, and these topics are not just for the Halloween season because uh, th- this this topics are always popular. And uh, but first, before we get started on some of the scariest, craziest places in the world, I want to I want to ask you about your 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 time in Japan. And then uh, this is something I've not heard about, but Captain Ron said he's heard a, heard about it before about the suicide forest. Could you tell us uh, about this and uh, how did how did when when did this get started? Was this like uh, in the nineteen or twentieth century, or does it go way way back? No, no, no. It goes way way back. Um, there was something called um, oh, my, okay. So forgive my Japanese, but it was called Ubutse, Ubutse, something like that. And the theory of this was that Japanese people would take they the the elderly to the forest to die because they couldn't support them back in the day when you know when Japan wasn't and how it was now uh, you know it was a feudal country and so they drop off their older elderly people in the mm. forest and just leave them there and let them fend for themselves so that's where the it was sort of it's like I mentioned in the book it's like um hands on Gretel in reverse of having, you know, um, the kid or, you know, the breadcrumb or, and because you're dropping off the kids in the forest, you're dropping off your grandparents mm. and leaving them there to, uh, so from that, uh, it came the legend that the, their ghosts haunted the forest. And, uh, that's been going on for yeah, a long time, hundreds of years. So it's not something new, like this forest has been around for a while and right. um and it's 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 in the japanese psyche like they you know a lot of when i lived in japan um we because if you climb mount Fu, mount Fuji beside the forest grows on the flanks of mount fuji so some japanese people when i said i'm like climbing mount fuji or, and i actually went down and into the forest japanese won't do it they're just like, wow. no way. Jeremy, it sounds like you're saying uh, it's murder forest, not not suicide forest. If people drop their older, <laughs> they're just like, there, yeah. it's like, that's like, that's more like leave them for dead. It's than like, they Grandpa, could them. you run over and go over and pick up that? Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then jump in the car and leave. <laughs> yeah. Look, um, a lot of it's it's a really beautiful place, but it's really creepy because a lot of them, if you go to, if you go to climb, Mount Fuji, which a lot of Westerners, foreigners do. Right. You get to this town, which uh, is at the base of Mount Fuji, and everybody knows about the forest, but they don't speak about it. Um, you can go in it, and there's a couple caves that are sort of open to tourists or whatever. Um, but if you go off the path and deep into the forest, it's just a whole different place. And it, it, it's not, yeah. It doesn't happen today, so it's not like right. You're not dropping off your parents, grandparents there today, and just driving <laughs> off. Uh, 
That was in the past. But if you do go off the path, and this is the really creepy thing, and they have signs that say, do not leave the path, da 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 da, and it's more to sort of keep you on the path. But if you do go off the path and go deep into the forest, you'll find these ribbons that lead to bodies because people string ribbons behind them in case they change their mind. It's sort of a better concept than, you know, when you jump off a building, if you're going to kill yourself by jumping off a building <laughs> and you have to go down and you change your mind, you're, you're screwed. Yeah. But if you go into this forest with this ribbon behind you, if you do you change your mind, you can find your way out again. But most people don't um, change their mind. And then if you follow these ribbons to the end, you actually, you find, like, it's terrible, but you find um, bodies, or if you don't find bodies, you find moldy tents or shoes or toothbrushes that people brought into the forest. Mm -hmm. uh, there's really, really, there's nothing like it, really. It's so, a strange place. So what is, what is it, what is the feeling like when you walk up? Do you get, like, this eerie feeling, uh, uncomfortable feeling of, of, of uh, just heaviness or what's what's the actual feeling of the walking into this forest or at least when they're where, where they yeah do that's this. what i read like when i was doing research for the book that's a lot of people said they get this heavy feeling mostly what i got when i went back there was um it's just quiet hmm. the weird thing about this forest is it's so lush and it's so green because it's growing out of volcanic rubble and everything. It's just a really green for everything is bright green, but um, there's no animal life. There's like, there's no birds. There's no, like, oh, that's birds crazy. The window now, but there's nothing when you step into this forest. So it is sort of like, I, maybe there is a heaviness, but it's when I step, when I went there after um, it was just, um, silence it was just like walk stepping into a vacuum and you can walk and walk and walk and everything looks the same is that the is that it is that the picture of it yeah, i don't know what that is um that that could be the said, foothills it, but there's oh yeah there's fuji in the back and those must be the foot yeah 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 it's beautiful i mean it's definitely beautiful well that's what people describe it as they describe it as the perfect place to die the beautiful <laughs> fort um and that's what it's described as quote unquote, the perfect place to die. And maybe this is why Japanese people started going there. Because if you do go and you don't know the dark history, it's a beautiful forest. And then, but then you go in and then you completely lose any direction because it's all green, it's all the same. Right. And then when you start coming upon those ribbons I told you about, and then, you know, personal belongings that have been, um, then it gets creepy. But it, it, is, a, it is a nice place. Jeremy, do you take so you took this real life place with these real life stories, and did you weave that into a fictional narrative? Is that what you've done here? Yeah. So the first one was Suicide Forest, and what happens in the book? Not to like that's just pure fiction. Yeah. So I wove that into a narrative. Second one, the catacombs in Paris. Everybody knows about the catacombs. Mm -hmm. So I just, I guess to answer your question, yeah, I've been taking like a real place and um, weave into it like a fictional story to explain either why the place exists or why people would go in there and what happens to them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love that idea. It's such a great idea. It exposes people place. to these places too, which is great. I think it's a brilliant idea. I really do. Now, do you know when exactly? Because yeah. I feel like there, there's traditions, you know, there's always traditions that start. And this happens to be one of the tra traditions that when it comes to the suicide forest. You said, you know, a couple of hundred years, but it feels like this was something that has. Do you know kind of the story of where it began? Because there has to be somebody, the first one that goes, okay, this is a great place to die. And then people are like, you know what? It's Bob over here, he sent. You know, he sent his grandparents over there. So let's do that. So do we know exactly when and who started it? Yeah, actually, yeah. So like with the uh, Ubatsi or however you pronounce it, which I mentioned before, right? which goes way back, dropping off the grandparents or whatever, that 
that was maybe the origin, but the modern origin, I guess, what you're asking, right? The modern in the yeah. nineteen in the nineteen sixties, there was um, some uh, there there was uh, if you Google it again, there 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 was a Japanese novel that romanticized. It was about it was a rom- a couple went into the forest to die together, and that romanticized the idea of killing yourself in the forest, and that was back in the sixties or something like that. So after that novel came out and popularized the idea of what this, you know, this terrible history that they had, um, some other guy came out and he wrote something. This is the name of it. It's called The Complete Manual of Suicide. It's a book describing how to kill yourself in suicide forest. So it's a lot of people who go into the forest, um, like the the searchers, like in Japan, there's these guys who go in to look for the bodies or whatever. They find these copies of this manual, this book called the Complete Manual of Suicide, <laughs> um, and it describes how how to die. <laughs> I, it's not funny, but it's just ridiculous. It's, yeah. It is funny. Cool. It's it's funny. funny. <laughs> um, but you, and people find that in the forest. Because, and, and so, yeah, the modern thing came after this guy romanticized it with his novel. And then somebody wrote a nonfiction book about the complete manual of suicide, how to die perfectly in the forest. So it, there's there's been a modern build up to this. And then recently, not that this doesn't even do with it, there was that movie, The Forest. I don't know if you guys heard of that. There was a movie called The Forest, um, a horror movie that took place in the thing in the forest. And there was the Matthew McConaughey movie, uh, Sea of Trees, which bombed. But it was like a he tried to do the role. I don't know what he did. I haven't seen it. But so, yeah. So though this is perpetuating the myth with the, with Hollywood and everything nowadays. Well, you know, I was thinking about this, though. You, a lot of times, animal. I'm just going to go to animals. When animals get sick, they go off. A lot of times they go off into the woods. They go off in, well, at least where I'm from. I know we had a dog that went, he never would leave the yard. But when he got sick and he went out into the pasture, and that's where he died. And so maybe this is just, you know, like a, a, a nature, you know, calling these people to this this place you know there's some people that that are more more in tune more in tune to nature than the rest of us yeah and Jap- japanese are very traditional in their sense with their history and everything right. especially you know, fuji which is sacred um right so with this growing on the side of mount fuji they've always had a long history with fuji and then this on the side um but if you want a scientific explanation some of the what I've read is that one of the reasons there's not much wind, there's no wind, so it's completely still alongside no animal life. But part of the reason for that is because it's so lush and the trees and everything grow so closely together that there's no no wind can come in, no birds can really fly around mm. in it or whatever. Um, but and then I guess one uh, one of the there's this sort of, you know, in like horror stories and horror movies, there's always the sidekick for humor or right. whatever. Right. That's so why I'm a, on the show. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so, so, so in Suicide Forest, there's this Japanese guy called, in the book, there's this guy called Tomo, who's the Japanese guy, and he's supposed to know what's going on. You know, he's Japanese, so he knows the forest and stuff. And then one, one of the Americans asked him, like, Tomo, why... Why is why is there no life? Why is there no animal? Why what and whatever he said, it's haunted for it's a haunted forest, man. Birds go other forests, non haunted forest type thing. So the, the, I guess the, the the idea is that like the myth is that it's haunted and that's why nothing grows and nothing uh, sorry nothing moves in it and whatever. But the the, the scientific reason behind it is that the trees and everything it's such a dense place that wind doesn't come in and maybe animal life can't really move around in it like it, it, it's, it's there, there there are reasons for it if you look deep enough i guess but um it's still a creepy, still a creepy <laughs> now do, do you said that that uh do they actually go now into because like here they would definitely go and r- remove the body or bones do they remove the bodies or, and or bones from over there or do they leave them 
No, um, that's part of the um, part of the uh, the reason for the ribbons and everything is that uh, some of the people who go in to commit suicide leave the ribbons behind them so they can find their way out again. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the ribbons are actually left by the um, the got the search. They have special search people who go in so they can find their way out again too. And they might draw arrows on a tree or do whatever. Right. Um, and they, I think. Back in the peak, I don't know what it is now, but they were removing something like 200 bodies a year. Wow, um, that's a lot. And of those bodies. are the ones they find. Uh, there, there are uh, there are a lot more. Like when my wife, um, she climbed Mount Fuji a different time I did, like because she was working in Japan at the same time I was. But she, long story, but she was still with her other boyfriend at the time, <laughs> <laughs> and she climbed it with him. Um, but when they came down. Uh, they came down on the slope into into um, Suicide Forest, and she went through the forest and in like um, some ditch. Ever they saw a body, so their body like it's it's not a rare thing. If you go off the path, you're probably going to bump into and you're going to run to something like that. Um, so yeah, it's mm. it's it's gruesome. It is gruesome. gruesome. Yeah, it's crazy. All right. Well, it's one of our one of my favorite subjects, and I watch I watch YouTube all the time about world's scariest places, and uh, we we definitely because you have a, a series of these, and so I I want to talk about uh, world's scariest places with you because I've not even heard about some of these, so I, I want to find out where did you do your research to find the world's scariest places. Um, so yeah, it started with suicide forest because I lived in Japan and I knew, you know, I knew the forest and that I, it wasn't going to be a series at the time. I just thought that'd be a good horror story. But once I did that and everybody was, I had an agent and he's like, oh, you need a series and you have to do like whatever. Of course. So I started thinking into it. And then, um, the second book in the series, which everybody knows about like, um, is the catacombs under Paris. Um, which is really freaky, but when I was, for my 30th birthday a number of years ago, I went to, I was backpacking through um, Europe with a couple of my friends, and we went to uh, the catacombs, but we went through the touristy part that you can go through. Right. Anyway, it was pretty freaky, and um, after that, uh, I'm like, well, you know, if I'm going to make this into a series, this is a good um, second follow-up uh so that with that one everything like if, if you go to paris there's a section that you can go down the stairs and you can go through and, and see but you still you see all the bones and it's but you're not going through like tiny little tunnels and like you know that you can barely squeeze through and stuff um that that's all fiction and but that was the idea for that one and then the third one was Helltown, which i don't know yeah yeah, that's um, that one was just uh, I don't know why why I came up with that one. I was on, um, <laughs> I probably saw some of the same stuff you guys did. If you well, like do a search on YouTube or something for world scariest places, you, you guys have done videos of scary places. Um, Helltown was one, and it was just seemed pretty. There were all these different legends, like one about a giant python that eats people there, one about Satanists and one about this and this and this. And I thought, well, what if I just sort of wrap all those theories up into one book? And it seemed like a, an idea. And then the next one, though, which I think is better suited for the scariest places, I Owned of the Dolls, which is in Mexico, which is just a completely, I haven't been there. Next time I go to Mexico, I'm going to go there because you can actually visit it now. But it's just an island hanging with thousands and thousands of dolls. So the idea again was there's some people who have ideas of why, you know, this old crazy guy who's died actually in the same place where um, he found his first doll. Apparently he died drowned by suicide in that same place. Um, why did he hang all these dolls on the island? So that that's the question that I ask myself when I write about these things. Why did why is this here? And then I just make up a fictional story behind it and go with that 
But you didn't visit it first. Do you ever go to these first? Like you did for oh, Paris, right? Only Seaside Forest. Seaside Forest, I was there first and in the catacombs. Um, but Helltown, I've never been to. And Island the Dolls, I've never been to. And the one you just asked me about, I guess, before we went on air, uh, was Mountain of the Dead, which is a thing in Russia. I've never been there, but... Uh, so just Maybe based on the legend or whatever, you, you take it from the legend or whatever, right? Just based on that. Yeah, you take it from the legend. It. Yeah. Take it from the legend and um, and and go from there because there's so much stuff actually on the internet if you really sort of, and books and stuff, if you dig deep into them, there's so much that you can get and which makes it writing easier because you're you're, you're still making it up but at the same time, if you want to hear firsthand experience of what somebody's felt like when they visited the Mountain of the Dead or, mm -hmm. or Helltown or whatever, you can go on like um, Trip, uh, what's that Trip site? Trip, trip Advisor. Trip Advisor, yeah. You can, <laughs> you can go on Trip Advisor and, and, there, and people have written reviews about it. You know, mm -hmm. they write not just hotels about these places. Right. And you can take authentic experiences that they've had and then just sort of go on those too so it's it's a pretty easy not easy but it's you not you don't have to make up everything you can sort of borrow and elaborate on what other people have, if you haven't been there yourself so i yeah. love that it's based in fact like that i love that that's where you start from jeremy jeremy if you don't mind we're going to take a quick break here uh we're on truth be told we're talking with jeremy bates about some of the world's scariest places so we're going to take a quick break, and uh, when we come back from the break, I'm going to ask Jeremy if, in fact, Tony's 78 Dodge van is one of the world's scariest <laughs> places. We'll find out after the break. We'll be right back on Truth Be Told. I'm Captain Ron with Tony Sweet. Have you ever thought you'd like to buy and sell houses but didn't know how or where to begin? Do you fear your job is in jeopardy, or is your business income reduction keeping you awake at night? We're in the best time in 25 years to make a fortune in real estate without using your money or credit, my name is Ron Legrand, and I've taught a half a million people to do just that and personally bought hundreds of houses myself. If you'll call 800-970-6155, 24 hours, and leave your information, I'll send you the first 500 callers my hot new CD, Foreclosure Fortunes, and my best-selling book to help you get started absolutely free. I'll show you how to build a six-figure income part-time with no previous experience and no license, even if you're a busy professional. Call 800-970-6155, 24 hours, and get my new book and CD free. That's 800-970-6155. Take your life back and make this your best year ever. Call 800-970-6155 now. Have you ever thought you'd like to buy... And Okay, and we're back, and uh, Jeremy told me that off the air, so we'll just keep moving forward. <laughs> Jeremy, you want to tell us about uh, what's the next place you've been to that, uh, or that you've uh, done a story of that's scary in the world? Uh, well, after, after the catacombs, it was Helltown, and then it was um, Island of the Dolls, and the most recent one, which isn't out yet, and I'm not sure when that's going out or what's happening with it, but it's called... Mountain of the Dead, and if anybody's interested. It's called uh, Mountain think, of the Dead? I, I think this is actually going to be a big thing uh, in the, in the, um, you know, coming up. Uh, it, it's called Igor Dyatlov. And it's called the Dyatlov Incident now, because named after this guy who led the ski team. Nine Russians in 1959 climbed, they, they went on this ski trip, 100% true story to this place called in what's been nicknamed Mountain of the Dead. Uh, they all died by morning time. They were all dead. Some gruesomely injured with broken ribs hmm. popping out of them and crushed skulls and stuff. Nobody knows to this day what happened. There's a lot of like conspiracy theories or whatever that's going on. And they ran the they run the gamut from, you know, Soviet experiments with rockets to this and um, to Yetis to everything that, but nobody can explain why the investigation went on for a few months. There were never any answers. And it still is one of the greatest unsolved mysteries that nobody knows about. So when I saw, when I came across that, I was just like, whoa, this is perfect for this series. So um, 
that's that's the one I got to next. And it's finished now, but it's with it's with somebody, so it's just um waiting to see what happens with it. So, hey Jeremy, did they just find a body like in the last year or two that was near that area? Yeah, so that yeah, so that that I they brought that came up again. It came back and they found another dead body in that area. Um which they can't explain why he died. But a really strange thing, and this had nothing to do with my book, but just something strange I found when I was doing research about it. Um, there's something weird with the number nine, because, okay, there were nine um, hikers who died in 1959. I think in 1991 or something, there were nine people in a, in a, a plane that crashed into the mountain who died. And then long before that, there were nine Mansi hunters who were the indigenous people of the area who died while they were on the mountain doing something like hunting or whatever. So there's always this number nine that keeps reoccurring. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no reason for it. It's probably, you know, it's coincidence, but mm -hmm. it's there's just so much weird stuff associated with that place and nobody can explain what's going on with it. And how do you how do you do the research? Do you actually I know since you don't go to haven't been to a few of them, do you just do online research? Do you get to interview any any people that have actually been there, experienced things there? And just a trip advisor. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Or the because if you say scariest, that's that's one thing, but actually is there activity, meaning paranormal activity there too? Um Look, this is the funny thing with how writing and publishing and everything has changed is 10 years ago or 15 years ago, when you look at all the like the big name author guys and everything, and they, they'll write in their um, their preface or whatever that, uh, that I want to thank this guy and this guy. And I talked to the police chief of this, if he's writing a police novel and this and this. And and they did. This is how they, I think they, they used to research. They'd call up and they'd talk to people who'd been there and they'd they try and get in, but um, maybe that still happens a lot. But with the internet, you can do it all on your own, and you right. don't really need to start calling up, you know, experts because there's a lot of experts who write about it on the internet. But then, like Captain Ron said, you can like, and I t said you can just go on TripAdvisor too, and you get these firsthand experiences. Right. People are answering your questions for you, and you don't have to sort of call them up and say, hey. And sound like a dick, you know. Like, oh, I'm a writer. Can I ask you some an interview about this? And they think you're just, you know, this guy <laughs> without friends. I don't know. Um, so uh, it's easy to. I think it's easy. It's really easy nowadays because there's just so much stuff on the internet. There's way to re There's you know you have to go deeper than what most people would do on a basic search. But I mean. You can get most of the stuff about these things um, various ways on the net now without going to them. And one of my favorite novels, actually, is um, I don't know if you guys know Scott's, uh, Scott Smith. He wrote A Simple Plan, which was made into a movie. But then he also wrote um, The Ruins, which was also made into a movie. These guys were trapped on like a Mexican step pyramid or whatever by this vine. Anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so uh, I, I really, I've, I've always liked him. Um, and I read something about him his, when he wrote The Ruins. And because it's, it's about these um, like four or five Americans who are in Mexico for spring break or something. And they go to this pyramid and they get trapped on this pyramid. And somebody asked him, like you guys asked me, have you ever been there or have you ever... Um, uh how do you research that or whatever and he said no he's never he never went there mm -hmm. uh he saw he's no reason to because because i imagine um i can't remember the interview in detail but because there's just so much stuff you can get off the internet you know about mexican culture or whatever right. and about you know what it was with the temperature and the jungle and this and that and that and you don't need to you don't it, I, I'm sure it helps, and trust me, if I ever start making a lot of money, I, I'll just fly to these places just for the hell of it. <laughs> say I've been to them, um, you know. But <laughs> if you're not making, well, like you know, 
if a lot of money like that and you can have that um that a luxury that there's no real reason that you need to do that it'd be fun to go there after and see if what you wrote actually matched what it was right you could yeah, get and then you get really pissed off if it doesn't right, <laughs> right. <laughs> jeremy let me ask you this yeah. if you do all this research in all these scary places throughout the world is there something that you came across that you found was very compelling that you felt was like, well, there's probably something here that's real, like some ghost story or something that you think, boy, this might be a real one. No. <laughs> no? Okay, good. That's a good answer. Yeah, because, um, and this is sometimes I get like when I, if some of the reviews and I get these and some of the reviews, people are expecting like a ghost story from suicide forest or from the catacombs and, they sort of lead that way. But one thing I've always done with this series is that I've made them, because I don't believe in ghosts. So I've always made them sort of like, the twists at the end are always believable, real things that can happen. And I've never gone the ghost way. Um, because it just seemed, I don't know, to me it was always like, oh, it's an easy cop out to have, you know, ghosts. I don't know. But no, I, I've never, I've never, believe that you know ghosts exist here or this, this do whatever there but um having said that there's another series i'm working on which i'm going to start i haven't started it but i'm going to start it but it's called um instead of the world's scariest places it's just called uh stranger places and with that series i'm going to still use these real live places like when you google scariest place in the world on youtube and you see mm -hmm. that might not um be big enough to be like a really big because most of the books in the world scariest places are pretty big books like four or five hundred pages these ones will be smaller two to three hundred pages but then i think also i'm going to go with a supernatural lean on them and sort of and though that will be the supernatural series but with these ones with the world's scariest places, um, they seem supernatural, and and um, but usually they turn out there's a reason why things are happening, which are which I always found scarier, and that's maybe why I went with it because I find that scarier than you know like ghosts because I don't believe in ghosts, so that never really scared me as much as you know a real horror of something like that, what happens in those books happening. Um, so, but there's going to be a different series that will sort of, to answer your question, that might go that way. But I still, still, and, and unless I see something like firsthand, unless I, something happens to me, I'm not, no, yeah, I'm not. Um, have, have you ever I'm, been to any places though that you, because when I was a kid, I actually, I, I saw an old man in my house. Like I used to see him every so often. We used to hear things all the time. And then, of course, I got older, and then, you know, usually when you get older, you kind of forget about that stuff. But years later, my nephew was sitting in my house, well, the house I grew up in, with his mother and my sister-in-law, and pointed to a chair and says, Mother, look at that old man sitting there. And so she was like, she goes, then I remember that you said that you used to see an old man. Even my mom says, oh, yeah, I remember you used to say that you used to see an old man. But... Ha were you ever, I mean, were you just fascinated with horror or did you like ever like go into a house you felt like hair stand up on end or uh, you felt like somebody staring at you or an energy? Did you ever feel that type of stuff? I had some pretty trippy experiences back in university when I was doing shrooms and <laughs> right, right, right. Of things. But, um, <laughs> as far as like the haunted haunted stuff goes and this is funny it's a good question because um my wife in the house that we're in now she says like a number of years ago and i never i i don't know how to take when she people tell me these type of things <laughs> she told me that she saw like the ghost like like a face outside the window one night and she's scared of that and uh I used to live in the Philippines, and the Philippine Filipinos are really, really Very um, superstitious, religious, yeah, really. but also um, uh, yeah. superstitious. Like yeah. really, really, like everybody believes in yeah. everything. Uh, and then people would tell me uh, these stories, and 
they 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 swear by them and they and they um and they they you know they, but i've never experienced anything like that yet i'm waiting like i I'd, I'd actually love to i don't know how i'd react but i'd actually love to be see something and i, I could not understand yeah. and just be just try to i don't know just see it and because i i think that would just be great in the sense that it just opens up your mind and you can think a bit differently if you experience something like that and that's like um, it, well that's like the um count dracula you know i'm trying to think of his name the um anyway in Trans- Vlad the impaler there we go and we did a show about that and people say when they go to this castle that there is the, the this feeling of just pure evil sometimes you don't know if, if that's just the human mind already going in with a pre- preconceived you know uh thought but i mean it, you you have to think that you know you know, energy is energy, no matter if it's a, a, a tree, human, whatever. And so energy is trapped, can be trapped in, 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 in a source. And I think that's a lot of times is what we're feeling is energy. But but I, I do believe that they're paranormal. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen it. I've, I've been around it. And, uh, and but I, I, I like for somebody like yourself, I, I, you know, I get it where you're like, I, you know, I got to see it. You know, I want to, I want to see this be, in front of my eyes before I can believe. Yeah. No, I, um, I, I agree with what you're saying with the energy thing. And I think, I'll, um, with haunted places and like haunted houses or sons, I, I agree that I, I, I think there's, there's something to do with energy being trapped and, you know, especially if there's some traumatic thing. The energy there, there's different explanations i've read a lot about this that you can sort of it's like um i forget the metaphor that you, but anyway i think yeah i i don't think it's far-fetched to believe that you can energy can be trapped in a place and it can repeat itself and right. this is what people experience in a different wavelength than what you can do with your five senses and this is the feeling you get i just haven't experienced that yet i'm not saying i don't think that that is out there I think there's a lot of stuff out there that we just can't put a thumb on. Yeah, can't explain. Uh, I, I haven't experienced it, but I haven't been wandering around asylums and haunted houses. And oh, that but that's that's something I want to do. So I don't know why. That's something I want to do. People think I'm crazy, but I want to do it. <laughs> I'm one of them. Uh, Jeremy, let me ask you this. I know we're winding out, running out of time here, but it, when you do all this research, you've looked at all these different places and things. Have you come across something that maybe Tony and I haven't heard of? Like we all know Bigfoot and Mothman and all these different. Have you found something that was like, wow, I never heard of that before that maybe we wouldn't have heard of before? Whew, um, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. That's a tough question. Um, I, to be, to be honest, to answer that question, um, I get a lot of stuff from doing like a search on um, YouTube or something of scariest places because people collect, you know, they put these lists together and they sure. share them. So the best way I can answer that is that if anybody is really interested is to go on to do a Google search of world's scariest places and my stuff doesn't come up but all this other stuff comes up or on YouTube, scariest places, because there's so many weird places in the, on, that you've never heard of. Right. To answer your question that are just so weird. Like there's, um, there's one place where there's this volcanic pit that has opened in the earth and it's just all lava and you can actually drive up to the lip and hang around it. And it looks wow. like the entrance to hell. <laughs> um, there's another one. There's another place I was reading about in Brazil that, uh, it's a strain. It's called the town of twins or the city of twins or something because there's an abnormal number of twins, like a really crazy number of twins, like just way beyond the scale of what should naturally happen. Why are there so many twins in this town? Like we're, you know, and uh, there's another play. There's just all these interesting, you know, things. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Tony and I are interesting. Putting together, uh, right. We're putting together one right now. We're working on putting a, a series on, on YouTube for Truth Be Told about mysterious places and scariest places. And yeah, it's amazing what's out there. Something like the twins thing. How bizarre. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, why there's why there's so many twins? You have to wonder, like, what's going on? Is it in the gum? You know, is it in the water? Just... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like I don't think it's the water that's yeah. causing the twins. It could be the gum, Tony. It could be the gum. <laughs> oh, you said gum. I just want to make yeah, sure. Yeah, double got... mint gum, Tony. <laughs> Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta watch it while you chew. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, before we get out of here, we want to make sure everybody knows that you can go to jeremybatesbooks.com, uh, pick up his books. I'm pretty much any any bookstore. I'm sure uh, Amazon. Uh, and you're you said the next book you 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 said is working on. What was it again? One more time. Uh, it's called Mountain of the Dead. Mountain of the Dead. It's not out yet, but. Um, uh could be yep could be coming out so like it's finished but it says so but there's there's a lot of stuff that goes right. on after it's finished before it comes out so hopefully it'll be out at some point great well, uh, great stuff and thank you jeremy so much for being here on truth be told you're yeah, gonna have absolutely. to come back when your new book comes out please come back and we can yeah definitely yeah it was yeah. Fun that'd be great here. Yep. Also, guys, uh, three weeks from today, we have the Starworks Conference in Laughlin, Nevada. Tony and I will be there live and in person. Come by and say hi. And uh, I think that's it run. for today, right, Tony? That's it. And we want to thank you guys for tuning in for Truth Be Told every Fridays. But uh, please, uh, again, we have our podcast and our YouTube channel. We'd love to have more subscriptions. We'd love to hearing your comments and uh, hearing about who you want to have on Truth Be Told. So until next time, this is Tony Sweet, Captain Ron, Jeremy Bates. We'll see you soon right here on Truth Be Told.